Hi there, welcome to new lecture on designing Azure batch solutions. So within this lecture, we're going to learn about the designing concepts for Azure batch. And also we are going to cover when to use Azure batch at the first and then we'll move to how Azure batch works. And then we will also move to the best practices of the uh, or the useful tips when you're trying to use the Azure batch service. So let's first understand what exactly is your batch. Azure batch can help you to run large scale of applications effectively in the cloud. That's true. But uh, what it can do also, it can schedule compute intensive tasks and dynamically adjust resources for your solution without managing infrastructure. As your batch can create and manage a pool of compute nodes, or we call it as a virtual machines, and as your batch can also install the applications in the backend automatically for you to run that tasks uh, or to run that scheduled jobs uh, on those computer nodes. So let's try to understand the flow uh, when to use Azure Batch. So when you're trying to use the Azure Batch, you can begin from a start. So the Azure Batch works well with the applications that are independently. When I say independently, the workloads are parallel workloads. Um, they are just a parallel workloads. Azure Batch is also effective for applications that needs to communicate with each other tightly uh, coupled work workloads. For example, uh, you can use a batch to start a service that runs as a uh, Monte Carlo simulation for a financial services. So it's one kind of you know, simulation that normally financial companies does that uh, or maybe service uh, processing kind of in you know, some kind of a large scale of images. Then as your batch can you know help you out that could be a a good solution uh, when you're trying to use so let's try to see that solution would you like to you know, build as a new or you want to you know lift and shift or cloud optimize let's say you have already application that and you would like to you know optimize it so in case if you're trying to optimize you might have to you know consider for hpc workloads and that can also run on as your batch also lift and shift side or migrating um, concept so can it be containerized? So if that's the case, then you might move to containerized. But if these applications are not containerized, then you also look for the next question for, can it be a web app or can it be API app? If no, then you might have to think for virtual machines and scale sets and then virtual um, um, machines uh, to run as a batch solution. So this is where you need to you know um, put your logics in this flowchart. Similarly, if it is a new application, are you going to uh, need a full control? If so, is this needs a uh, batch kind of in you know, a solution? If so, virtual machines is the concept for you, and then you can you know evaluate. So Azure Batch basically enables large scale parallel and high performance computers or HPC we call high performance computing uh, that can run bad jobs with the ability to scale to tens or hundreds or even thousands of virtual machines in the back end to run those tasks so when you're ready to run a job bash does the f oh, couple of things in the back end so you could you know look at um, uh, what kind of a task it's gonna run so it's gonna run um, some kind of you know, keywords are there here I'm gonna talk on that in the next slide but you can try to remember those keywords like it's gonna uh, start the pool of compute uh, VMs for you so I used a word called pool and then it's gonna install the applications and also it's gonna stage your uh, required data uh, and it can run the jobs with a many task as you have uh, and you could even identify what task is getting failed and you can re queue those works and you can scale down the pool as a work is completed example so you could have uh, done all of this task so let's also understand uh, other concepts like as you batch how it's gonna work so I could you know put it in a two way we could you know look into the this diagram in a two uh, ways or the right word would be the two parts 
but you could easily remember these two parts uh, if you could you know look at this diagram the first step is you are actually uploading the input files or the applications to Azure storage account so once the uh, data is stored in your storage account you could actually create uh, from your application or a service the pool a word called pool a pool is nothing but your compute instances which consist of your jobs and tasks so pool can, can consist of your jobs or the tasks and the pool of computers uh, or number of nodes I would say and then um, it's gonna interact with your files that are stored from your Azure uh, storage account or uh, storage and then you could you know monitor the pool or the tasks that are executing so in case if the tasks are performing uh, not well or it needs more computing then the pool can create based on the demand more computers so finally you could you know take the output um, from storage account whether it is success or failed or you want to requeue them you could do that automatically so uh, easy to remember there are two types uh, or two parts one would be your request or your service uh, which is uh, nothing but your uploading part and the other one would be the uh, batch as a compute platform uh, which is behind your services so which will act or which does the batch to use the Azure storage account to fetch the application here what it does it, it is doing is it is fetching the files and then the data need to complete the task so as you write the output to storage account here in this case and behind the scenes there are collections which we called as a pools of virtual machines and the resources the jobs and the tasks on execution part so these are the things that you need to know remember and now it's time for us to understand the best practices so let's understand those best practices when to or how to use this uh, Azure Batch as a service. So there are a couple of things I would put it here in a three best practices that you need to you know look into it. But this is not just a limitation. You could actually visit this page to get more resources or more understanding of the other best practices that uh, are followed by industry wide or Microsoft recommended best practices so let's begin with the pools so pools is if your job consists of a short running task don't create a new pool for your each job the overhead to create a new new pools will diminish the runtime of the job also it's the best to have your jobs use the pools that dynamically if your jobs use the same pool for everything there's a chance that job won't run if something goes wrong with that pool so make sure that um, if needed really you can you could actually create a new pool and coming back to the nodes individual nodes aren't guaranteed uh, to always be available so if your batch workload requires uh, deterministic or guaranteed progress you should allocate uh, pools with multiple nodes consider using isolated vm sizes for workloads with complaints and regulatory requirements you always have to look at the complaints and regulatory requirements when you're trying to create because that's at the end it matters for us and coming back to the jobs uh, with respected so uniquely your uniquely name your all the jobs that you are trying to create so that you can accurately monitor and you could you know log the activities properly with the job name and consider grouping your tasks into effectively sized jobs for example if i take an example it's more efficient to use a single job containing thousand tasks rather than creating it hundred jobs that consist of 10 each tasks so you could you know think in that way so that's that's all about the best practices but do check out here within this link for other best practices I hope this uh, actually is useful for designing as your bad service thank you for watching this